This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, with unemployment sitting around 50%, many people turned up to yesterday's Careers Expo on the West Coast. A Dunedin family is offering a $1,000 reward for the return of their much-loved cat. And a Dunedin man says it's surprisingly easy to run a business, having just opened a kebab shop. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Taipotini Polytechnic has teamed up with West Coast Pathways to bring a showcase of career opportunities in Greymouth. Ahead of the event, organisers were anticipating more than a thousand, mostly young people, would show up. Some of the many people who showed up to a career expo at Taipotini Polytechnic in Greymouth yesterday. The Polytechnic's liaison coordinator, Jade Manahuya, says they're proud to be hosting the event. Oh, it's really exciting and we're really lucky to be able to host it and um, have it on campus and um, it's really exciting to be able to open our doors to the public. More than 40 businesses and training providers including the Department of Conservation, Naitahu Forestry and more were on hand to offer options for those wanting to find their place in the world. Tourism coordinator Heidi Gillingham says their virtual reality display attracted many visitors. So these guys are doing a skydive, a bungee, a zip ride. They're having a go at some virtual reality experiences and meeting some people in different jobs to see whether or not they could imagine themselves working in those roles. Grey Mouse Ministry of Social Development has seen a 45% increase in the number of people registering as unemployed since 2018, adding to the need for expos like this in the local community. A couple of John Paul High School pupils say they're keen to look at further education, despite some of the other options on offer. Um, maybe engineering at UC, or even like an outdoor, um, almost like rock climbing and kayaking and all that, like I'm really like, into everything pretty much. And I came here mostly to just look at Christchurch University, and I'm thinking about doing a bachelor's degree in commerce, and then more in the accountancy. Taipotini Polytechnic says they were really excited to bring all of the employers, training providers and support agencies together under one roof for the youth of the West Coast. In Greymouth, the South Today. The Lime Scooter Company is to cease operating in Dunedin. The e-scooter hire company was the first major international brand to launch in Dunedin in January 2019 and had market dominance over its first rival, Wave. The Neuron Scooter Company announced this afternoon it will be the sole e-scooter operator in Dunedin from July the 1st, as Lime has decided not to reapply for a permit to operate in the city. A Lime spokesperson says the company weighed up many factors and may return to the city when the timing is right. Neuron is set to double its fleet to 500 vehicles in Dunedin. Rewards for missing pets are reaching into four figures, but owners say no price is too high to get their fur babies back. A Dunedin woman is offering a $1,000 reward for the return of their beloved family pet. Putting up posters in the hope of finding a much loved Moggy. So, Molly is our much beloved uh, one year old vermin sort of cross mix cat, and she went missing six weeks ago when we were in the process of moving house. So, unfortunately, she got spooked by the movers um, and ran off, and we haven't seen her since. Dunedin woman Catherine Wright is going all out to find her crossbreed cat, Molly. They're offering a $1,000 reward for the cat's return as a way of illustrating how much their cat means to them. This is a way to show people really quickly just how special she is to us, how much she's a part of our family, and hopefully just to stand out from the noise a little bit. You know, there's hundreds of pets that go missing every week, and this is a way that we can... I guess rise to the top of that noise a little bit and hopefully just stick in people's minds a little bit so that when somebody does see her they'll remember that she's special, she's loved, she's missed and they'll get in touch with us. 
Catherine Wright has posted widely on social media, put flies around her neighbourhood and pasted posters up around the city. She says the main reason for the large reward is to catch people's attention. In Dunedin, the South Today. The child who returned a week positive for COVID-19 on Stewart Island has tested positive for a virus responsible for the common cold. The Ministry of Health says Southern DHB public health staff are continuing to access test results after a child with an indeterminate test result for COVID-19 was identified on the island. The child swab had tested positive for rhinovirus, which causes the common cold. The testing centre established on Stewart Island yesterday resulted in 93 swabs being collected, which would be processed over the next two days. A Dunedin man who's opened a new Turkish kebab shop on Dunedin's George Street says he's been surprised at how easy it is to run his own business. Mustafa, Mustafa Bostas says using accountants and online programs to look after things such as the payroll allows him to focus on the daily business of serving his customers. Mustafa Bostas is just one week into operating his own business for the first time, a kebab cafe on Dunedin's George Street. Prior to setting up this eatery, Bostas had worked in a number of Turkish restaurants and takeaway shops, but he'd never managed his own business before. It's so easy to operate a business because um, you just leave it to your accountant and online like payroll, like tank of payroll. What they do is they do the, all the work for us and we just do the hard work in the store. So as the years go, it gets easier and easier to operate a business because it's all done electronically. He's named his restaurant Huzur, which means comfort and peace in Turkish. There's a meaning behind that name because of the, all the hard work and how, um, hard times that we've been through. And at, fine, at now, we're in peace. So that's why I thought it, we'll just name it Huzur. Boztaz says he was taught to make kebabs by his father, Razaman Boztaz, who immigrated to New Zealand over 20 years ago and operated several popular kebab cafes around Dunedin. My father was chef for 20 years, so he taught us um, like the recipes and ingredients and how to make the best kebab in Dunedin. Boztaz says he's thinking he might expand his business with food trucks selling kebabs at events around the south. In Dunedin, the south today. Still to come on the south today, the rollout of nearly 14,000 LED lights across Dunedin is close to completion. And we have this week's edition of Rugby Chat with rugby aficionado Paul Dwyer. So catch this and more after the break. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. 
Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We've opened another pop-up store in Invercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right beside the Lone Star. Come and check us out. We've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got moleskins. We've got every sort of shirt. Worn ones, work ones, business. Merino knitwear, jeans, trousers. You name it, the list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear. It fits. Alex Campbell Menswear. Pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill. TV, our favourite babysitter, but it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. Welcome back. Work is nearly finished on a two and a half year project to install close to 14,000 new LED lights across Dunedin. The Dunedin City Council says contractors have fewer than 200 lights left to install. Some heritage lights in the central city have not been upgraded and the council hasn't yet made a decision on what will happen with them. Costing $15 million, Waka Kutahi New Zealand Transport Agency has funded 85% of the total cost. The work is on track to be finished by the end of this month. A Christchurch man has written a children's book about a friendly dog he met while exercising in his wheelchair along the coastal pathway in Redcliffs. Called Arnie and the Wheelchair Guy, the book teaches children about disabilities. When I was out on my wheelchair, I met Duncan and Natalia and became friends with him and with Arnie, of course. I met him on this little track here. He was running along with his family and he took a great interest in me. So we've been friends ever since. He, every time he comes out with his family, he'll come up to me and want to cuddle. Won't you, Arnie? You know, he's a lovely dog and that's how I met him. He's such a character and I saw all his adventures and he has so many adventures that I said to Duncan that I could write a book about this, a children's story, so he agreed and so we took it from there and it's taken a year for us to, to kind of get the story finished and edited and printed and stuff, so it's just been printed recently. Oh, it's been, been a really hard job because I've never published a book before. But I, I was a teacher, so I was able to put those skills to use in writing the book, and, and uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. It's a long story, but basically I, I got a brain tumour that was inoperable back in 2001, and they treated me with a lot of radiation, and they said that in years to come, like it happened to me in 2016, that because of the amount of radiation that I'd had, that I'd slowly lose the use of my legs, and that's been gradually happening. And um, so, August 2019, I moved into a wheelchair. Oh, I think they'll get from the book is, it's good for um, people in wheelchairs to have fun with a dog, and that people in wheelchairs are just normal people, and they, they, uh, 
they have really can lead a pretty normal life really that's what I want kids to get from the book and it's okay to be in a wheelchair if you're a child it's okay it's not a big deal In this edition of Rugby Chat, rugby aficionado Paul Dwyer talks with two long-serving players from rival teams, who are both celebrating milestones at the Premier level. Welcome to ODT Rugby Chat, brought to you by Garrett Orr, my old mate Gerald Orr across uh, Kaikoura Valley. Make sure you go and buy a garage door off him. Um, look, I've decided to um, come into the provinces today, so I've actually come out to the mighty um, Spannerheads out at... Uh, out at the toolbox, the Green Island Club. So, because um, I've got a couple of special guys, I've got Brody Hume with me, who's the um, has played a hundred games. It took two weeks ago, I think, against Green Island, and I've got Sam Arepa from uh, midfielder for GI, and he's playing his hundred and fiftieth game on Saturday. So, Brody, mate, I'll start with you. So, you played your hundredth game against Green Island, and you lost, and you've lost to Green Island twice this year. So, what did that did that sort of make you feel pretty grumpy on your hundredth game? Yeah, no, pretty pretty gutted, but. Ah, oh, that's rugby, eh? You yeah. know, you win them, you lose them, but yeah, pretty stoked to get the hundred games. Yeah, so mate, so when did you start? Um, nine years ago, I started out at Torrey, um, played Colts the first year, and played a few games for the Prems, and then um, yeah, I played Prems. Because there's, because there's a lot of competition though. You guys have always had competition for places for Lucy's, haven't they? Yeah, it was pretty tough. Um, it was Charlie and Willis and then Jimmy Lynch's. And well, you went pretty hard to get a run when those boys were playing. Yeah, yeah um, just had to wait for an injury and had a chance and, yeah, just played. So we're just saying off here, Sam. So, look, um, you're playing your 150th game this weekend. We just worked it out. So um, Yumi played his 100th game and lost to you boys. Mark Grieve Dunn played, a couple of, played 150 games a couple of weeks ago. He lost. And then Harmi Toma played for the Sharks against Southern last week. He played his 100th game and they lost as well. So chances are you're going to lose as well this weekend. Well, that's what the stats say. But, look, I'm, I know what our boys can deliver on Saturday, so I'm sure we'll turn up and, and get the job done for us. I hear you've got a reasonably strong side back in. You've got Ray New back. He's Ray, Ray New who's come back in and, you've, and you're looking reasonably... Are you, do you, are you even getting a start? Uh, just managing to scrape my way in there. Yeah, yeah Levi's going to jump on the wing, so give me an opportunity to get through some minutes on my 150. So, no, we're looking good this week. I think we've got Ollie Haig, who's got a, um, a varsity exam. He'll be out, but we've got Sean Jensen stepping into that blind side, so we'll be as strong as we can be. Now, you boys are going good, so you're unbeaten. Um, so you're unbeaten in, um, in the Galloway. Um, so you're on 20 points, so I've already worked out you've already qualified for the top six mm -hmm. and everybody else is chasing their tail a bit. So that, does that take some pressure off or is that a minor point? No, it's a minor point. So for us, we've just got to keep making sure we're ticking our boxes. We want to finish on top of the table, so take five points away from every game for the next four games and solidify that position up top for us. That's ideally where we want to finish up anyway. So look, there it is. Thanks, boys, and we'll be back with you again next week. And you can watch the full interview online at odt.co.nz. Still to come on the South today, things are looking positive for economic activity in Otago and Southland for the coming year. And we check out what's in store for you with the weekend's weather. So see you after the break. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Men's Wear. We've opened another pop-up store in Invercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right beside the Lone Star. Come and check us out. We've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got moleskins. We've got every sort of shirt. Worn ones, work ones, business. Merino knitwear, jeans, trousers. You name it, the list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear. It fits. Alex Campbell Menswear. Pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Thanks for staying with us. The latest outlook from Westpac says that economic activity in Otago and Southland is expected to show some improvement over the coming year. However, the lack of international tourists means that southern regions will continue to lag behind other regions. The report from Westpac industry economist Paul Clark does say Otago stands to benefit from winter tourists following the new travel bubble with Australia. The region's sheep and beef farmers also gain from rising prices. Payouts for prime meat and horticultural products are set to accelerate as COVID-19 vaccinations gather pace overseas and people head back to the restaurants. And a high yielding grape harvest shows promise for wine production over the coming year. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. With unemployment sitting around 50%, many people turned up to yesterday's Careers Expo on the West Coast to assess their options. A Dunedin family is offering a $1,000 reward for the return of their much-loved cat, which has been missing for six weeks. And a Dunedin man says it's surprisingly easy to run a business, having just opened a kebab shop in North Dunedin. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Mr Craig Page. What have you got for us in tomorrow's paper? Good evening. Yes, Saturday's paper, so plenty of reading as usual. Um, look, there's been talk in recent days uh, about concerns with teenagers sharing explicit, explicit um, photos and videos via social media and sort of prompted NetSafe to raise those concerns publicly earlier in the week. Our reporter Daisy, Daisy Hudson's taken a look at how big the problem is at Targo and, and has come out a wee bit surprised at how rampant it is in the region. Um, Pupils we've spoken to uh, said that images are regularly being shared and some of them even depicting sexual assaults, which is a real concern out there. Um, we've talked to the police, they confirm basically what we're hearing and has and is warned that some teens have actually been taken to court for sharing these sorts of videos in the past and, and it's something they, you know, they regularly are prepared to look at and will take action if necessary. So, And, and one Dunedin principal as well has talked openly about the issues that schools and parents are facing with these, sites, these sorts of matters. You know, I suppose every kid's got a cell phone and they're very quick to video and photograph everything and anything these days and uh, and once the photos are taken they're there for all to see. So. Yeah I was going to say you can't take them just down straight away. No you can't so it is causing a lot of issues and it's a big issue around Dunedin so uh, well worth a read that story. Um, I see the the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern got the first of her vaccinations today and uh, there's been a bit of concern and confusion over the vaccination rollout, who's due, who's not, how you go about it. So we've put a list of questions to health officials and have managed to get some answers that would be very good with us. So we're going to run those tomorrow. So it's sort of a comprehensive how to and why to with, with vaccine rollout. So um, that's well worth a look as well. Uh, a weekend mix, um, we take a look at the recently released Climate Change Commission report. Tom McKinley talks to those who it's likely to impact. He talks to a range of teenagers about whether the report's gone far, far enough and what they'd like to see happen as well. And just finally with sport, huge weekend of sport happening. We've got test cricket starting tonight, my passion, uh, in New Zealand versus India and England. Plenty of rain. Um, but of course the big thing's the Highlanders playing the Boos in the Super Rugby final. And um, yeah, we wish them all the well with the full coverage on that as well. Wonderful. Good luck to the Highlanders. And now it's time for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the southern view, the sun makes a rare appearance over Dunedin. 
Looking at the situation, a low pressure system will move across the Tasman Sea tomorrow and onto the North Island on Sunday, bringing a period of cold, cloudy easterly airflow onto the Otago coast, but mostly fine weather inland. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, showers in 12 degrees for Westport and also 12 degrees for Greymouth with scattered showers throughout the day. Moving to the northeast, showers in 10 degrees here for Nelson and 11 degrees for Blenheim. Moving down to Canterbury, showers in Kaikoura as well with 10 degrees. It's a cloudy day for both Christchurch and Ashburton with 8 degrees in Christchurch and 7 in Ashburton. Heading to the southern towns, light easterlies with some cloud for Balclutha and 11 degrees. The Catlins, Lumsden and Gore also see a high of 11 degrees with light winds and fine weather. Moving to the central lakes area, light winds with increasing cloud for most in this region with 9 degrees in Wanaka and Alexandra, 8 degrees in Queenstown. Tiana also has light winds and fine weather with a cooler 7 degrees. And moving to the northern towns along the coast, cloudy with light easterlies and 12 degrees for Timaru and Omaru. Moving inland, light winds and increasing cloud with 10 degrees for Twizel and Damarama. And in Dunedin, fine and cold tonight with a low of 3. A little milder tomorrow, still mostly fine with sunny periods, some cloud and moderate north easterlies. Cloud increases and you can expect some drizzle patches developing tomorrow night, a high of 12 and a low of 10. And it's overcast on Sunday with drizzle patches clearing during the afternoon and moderate easterlies, a high of 11 and a low of 8. And in Invercargill, fine and cold tonight with a low of 1. Sunny periods with some high cloud tomorrow and Sunday and light easterlies, a high of 12 and a low of 3. And Sunday sees a high of 12 and a low of 5. And that's all from the South Today team for this Friday and in fact the week. For the latest news from the Southern Region, head online to odt.co.nz and check out Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Have a great weekend and go the Highlanders. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.